Chair Rouse, thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you. Nice to be here. So, I mean, you must be delighted, not, not just with this month, but those revisions too. It's like there was never even the slightest of, of blips to the performance in, in the jobs market. Well, absolutely. I mean, this, what this jobs report suggests for this month, we never focus on just one month. But what it shows is that over the past year that this economy has been making robust and steady job growth. So over the course of the past uh, year, we've added 6.7 million jobs. That's a slight revision upwards by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And as you pointed out, that over the past three months, on average, we've been adding over half a million jobs a month. So this report reflects that we've had a strong, robust recovery. And while we recognize we have a lot more work to do, that the, the economy is really in good shape. In terms of that uh, work that remains, particularly as it, as it relates to the, the labor market, is it all now about the participation rate? And, and how do you plan to address that? So, yes, part of what remains is that we, there, while we saw a really historic increase in the labor force participation rate over the last uh, 12 months, uh, we do know that there are workers out there who are still not looking for work because of the virus. They still have child care concerns. Uh, and we know that we still need to be able to, you know, get through this wave and, and subsequent waves. Um, you know, in addition, we can put it right out there. We recognize that there are supply chain challenges and that we, there is still some healing to be ha that we need to have in this, this, this economy. But overall, we have, robust, we have robust growth, some of the fastest growth uh, in the developed world. And this suggests that the efforts that the president made last year uh, have really paid off, that we've gotten the economy through what we hope will be the worst of the pandemic, certainly probably not the end, uh, but that we've got the tools in place to help us do so. Given that strong growth backdrop and stronger than I think many people were expecting, what does that change about the inflation picture from your vantage point? Do you think it sets us up for uh, an even more severe inflation picture looking forward? Well, look, the, you know, the Federal Reserve will be watching these data, and as they recalibrate what their, their monetary policy is, they will be making those adjustments. What this suggests is that we have a very robust uh, labor market. Unemployment ticked up slightly to 4.0%, but that was accompanied by a slight increase, uh, depending on how you measure it, but an increase in labor force participation, and so that is rather, rather healthy. So what does this look for? You know, the, the inflation outlook is because we've had such strong growth and our supply chain challenges remain. Uh, we are working through them. I think if you talk to retailers and manufacturers, they are, they are anticipating that that eases over the course of this year. And forecasters expect inflation to ease over the coming months. Are you fearful, though, that, uh, Chair Ross, those forecasts will be wrong again? Uh, I mean, those, that explanation could have been given six months ago, even 12 months ago. Uh, and yet clearly it, it was wrong and inflation persisted for longer and in a more severe sense than, than anyone expected. What, what gives you confidence that this time those people that forecast for it to peak in two or three or four months will be right? Well, look, you know, I think one thing we've learned is it's very challenging to forecast during a pandemic. Uh, and so we must be humble about that. But what we know is that this downturn has been tied to the pandemic. And we're just not in the same place that we were two years ago regarding the pandemic. We've got the tools. Three quarters of adults in the U.S. are fully vaccinated. We have vaccines that are getting approved for children. Uh, we've got boosters. We have therapeutics. Uh, we've been providing testing so that people are able to test themselves and see if they have the virus. We are developing the tools to help us uh, stay safe while, while maintaining our economic activity. So. You know, the reason why forecasters are expecting that inflation will ease is because the economy is healing. And we're expecting that as the economy heals, the supply and demand mismatch, which is causing the inflation, will ease.